Can you hear me now? All right. How's that? Thank you, Sue. Is it better now? She's watching. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. My name is Chris. And now you can mute it. Go I ahead. Very, I am a very special Take two. <laughs> like you said, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, all right. Let's start this over because you know what? I can't edit this. <laughs> Actually, my wife can. This will look way better on YouTube, guys. We promise. <laughs> yeah. So, right here. Gary Federico, Super 3. Again. Keep married. We can have an abortion in Super 3. Taylor and I come to Super Street. Wait, no market, just here. <laughs> <laughs> Tino, that's Super Com. Frank Holby, top sports. Okay. All right. We'll skip over the round away. We already talked about it. We'll, we'll get back to that. Again. So. Okay. All right. So, what we're going to do now, um, we're going to ask everybody the same question. We're going to go down the line, um, just answer it the best that you can. Um, the first question is, what drew you into drag racing? Like specifically, was it family, just random? How did you get involved? Yeah. I had friends in Rochelle who were street racers. One was a drag racer. I was a street racer for a long time before I became a drag racer. Once I felt power, it was power that was what I felt. <laughs> That's what you wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, well, I'm probably 15 when they took me to give it up to a 13. And uh, the funny card used to start up in the stage and then drive around. And uh, part of Black Magic, or that's the one that we got there. Anyway, he fired up, his throttle got stuck, and he running to the back of the truck. I'm like, there. <laughs> Get me a car. Perfect. That was like it was. Now, the cool thing about Keith's car is it's probably, I think it's probably the only. How about with the sunroof and uh, stereo? Yeah, well, probably the only one. <laughs> <laughs> that, when he went to the pit road, said, uh, see some how we used to blast the 80s. Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Taylor? Um, so I got my start when I was eight years old. I'm a third generation racer. so. There was no other option but to become a drag racer and my start was kind of funny because i got into a junior and my parents took me to my first race and i cried in the motorhome and i said i'm sick i don't feel good i'm not going out there and my dad pushed me and said no you are you got this and ever since then i've been in a car wait so a lot of people don't know that i actually was a drag racer before i took over in lebanon valley that was back in the late 80s yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I used to be a big street racer back in the 80s, and then I got started off on a drag bike circuit in Lebanon Valley. Um, unfortunately, I had a bad accident and been sidelined for a couple of years. I went into a super comp Thunderbird. Uh, from there, I moved up. I bought my camera and this comp eliminator dragster. And then I went into what would have been a super pro car running 750s, getting yelled at back in the 1900s, Taylor. You don't remember that. But, uh, and now I've been at Lebanon Valley for about 13 years full time managing the inmates, so we call it. So uh, I'm glad to be here. So, moving on. Tina, I actually was, um, I started out in NASCAR when I was 15. My father put me into uh, circle truck cars and I met my now husband who's a sand drag racer and I didn't know what that was, so I said, well, let's try it. And we've been doing that for several years. And a year ago, this coming July, I was sitting up here for the divisional. And I said, I got to do this. This is my lifelong dream. This is everything I've ever wanted to do. And my husband said, you're crazy. He said, what class? I said, just get me a dragster. I just need to do a dragster. And it was, that was on a Saturday. And on Monday, I bought a dragster. So, and then I went to Frank Holly School. And I'm never looking back. This is awesome. This stuff is just freaking awesome. <laughs> And Frank. Uh, my father drank race, so I just had this track when I was a kid. And it was basically, that was it. My kids race, my racing family. Awesome. So, Taylor. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> kind of a, an awesome coincidence that you're standing next to the man that you guys were chasing each other last year. What's, what is it like? 
for you being fairly new in Super Street to be chasing what is considered one of the best Super Street racers in the country? Yeah, Keith is an awesome racer. I mean, as when I started out in Super Street, obviously I had watched my uncle race for, I don't know how long he was racing Super Street for, but I had seen him beat Keith, lose to Keith, Brian Sawyer, all of them. And when I first ran Keith, I think it was at Cecil County, right? I think it was Cecil County. I had won. Yeah, I won. And I was like, wow, this is just awesome. Like you respect someone like him so much. And to beat him is even better than just beating like your average Me. Joe, I feel like, <laughs> because he's such a good racer. And no, you're a good racer too, so don't say that. But yeah, it's just a dream to be out there with all of these people. And I have a great support system. My uncle, Sean, I mean, without him, I wouldn't be successful in any way in life or racing. So really lucky to have him and he's a great racer. <laughs> so I had asked you the other day what to do with the Baxter. You're heading to Norwalk, Norwalk back, and you're going to race just the Baxter? Yes. So I, my dad approached me in the beginning of this season. And he said, listen, Tori, my little sister, is going to start racing. Well, what do you want to race, the dragster or the truck? They gave me the choice. And I feel like I've fallen in love with the truck, and I don't want to leave it. And I, it's been a dream for me to race Super Comp. That's like, I mean, a lot of people have dreams of going pro. My dream is just to race Super Comp, but now that's changed. I just want to stay in Super Street and try to <laughs> <laughs> and stay where I'm at. So I am racing one race in Norwalk because my sister has no great points. So I might make one other appearance in the dragster, but that's about it. So you have to stay with her? Yeah. Clearly, we don't have any say in what class you no, stay in. I'm going to stay there. Sorry. Right. <laughs> so wait, how hard was it to transition from the driver's seat to the tower? Hmm. <laughs> well, I can tell you, definitely, definitely, you, you definitely see a different experience. And I always tell racers, you know, you may not like the decision I make. You come sit in my seat for one day, I guarantee you will never come to my tower again and question me. So, uh, it, for me, Get out of racing. It's a, it's a love of the sport. You never want to leave it. But well, once I got on it, I got into management. Uh, I don't think I'd ever get back into racing. Um, just a competitive level. I'm a, I was a heavy competitor back then. Uh, you know, back in the well, early 2000s when you weren't allowed to go to 750, I was getting yelled at every weekend. 750. Guys over there, that's not the thing. But if you rack it back then, I was one of the best guys on the property. I'd be yelling every week and like, well, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's it, it's difficult to watch your friends still race sometimes, but I know where I'm at right now and I feel better where I'm at. I think of that I made a big change into a lot of programs and not only Lebanon Valley, but Cross country. Division one, if you ever go to a division meeting or a national meeting, most of the good ideas come out of division one. And those those thoughts, rule changes, programs are from the track management of division one. And division one seems to be the leader of what other divisions do. And I'm proud to say that. You know, I think too, out of respect for you, I think we're very full and pretty lucky to have an ex racer step into that because you know what we're going through down there instead of just bringing an outsider in to be the person who makes all the calls on us and on the track and everything. I think it makes it a lot, it makes it a lot of an easier way for us on the track to have you knowing you sat in our seat. Yeah, you, absolutely. You, you know, walked our walk. And I get racers here, I mean, you know, it's a hot day, you know, why are you calling us last minute? Because you want to sit in the lane for three hours right. and wait for your run? You know, right. I, I get it. I've been there when I played in the lanes. Based on different days, I do different programs based on what it is to make the racer comfortable going down the track. I always enjoy the nice, calm, constructive conversations. And you know what? The best tower fight ever was me and Gary Federico. I mean, I had my kitty cat with his whole way. Oh my God, I thought you guys were both going to come on blue. I said, no, we're going to have spaghetti and meatballs. Now. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, we're we Italian. Actually, we said we, we had to work it out. out. We're good. We shook hands. We shook hands and we left. And, That's we what it is. and I'm glad to have this in my own track. And I'm even more glad that you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. I worked for Division One 
I worked for the two years in a row, one junior race a year. And I told Dave, I said, I gained so much more respect for what you guys do because all the parents, like you have the people who aren't happy, you have the people that are mad about your decision. Yeah. And ever since that day, I told Dave, I respect you so much more and I'll never say another <laughs> word because you guys are the best. So for those of you, Frank, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you, that race multiple classes, is that easy to do or is it hard? This and have, have you ever run both your cars at the same event? This is the first race that I'm doing two cars. And it is a little hectic because I'm, I'm hitting two different trees. So I got to remember that. I got to remember to put the helmet. And as soon as I get back, I put the helmet right in the other car so I don't forget that. So it is, you know, I only... It is hectic for me because I'm doing it, but hopefully uh, everything goes smooth and we'll see how it goes the rest of the year. Awesome. So looking at the next generation of racers, yes, Claudia, I'm looking at you, and Frank, you as well. What advice would all of you as experienced racers, even if it's you know the, the newbie, so to speak, with you, Tina, what advice would you guys give to the next generation of racers? Would you say run like the wind and find something better to do, or would you would you say whatever? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know why? <laughs> be be the kid that lives in mom and dad's basement. <laughs> I always say that, I didn't, and I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. So, so no, but seriously, what what advice would all of you guys who've been, and, you know, again, even Taylor, she's been around it, you know, basically, you know, all of her life. What advice would you give the next generation, such as Claudia? I feel like growing up as a kid in the racetrack, you take away like the trouble that you can get into because like I'm with my family every weekend. So I always joke with people that the racetrack is a family reunion for me. So we have. 10 entries in every race and I get to spend every day with my family like how much better could that get so I think it's a great thing to get involved in and you know you're lucky Taylor because your family is with you every weekend but there are many of us that don't have our families with us yeah so don't forget your family values too exactly. when you take you take your losses when you get a loss you gotta you get your 10 15 minutes of grunt and you move on because this is uh this is not baseball where three out of ten is going to do it. You got to be seven for seven and six for six, and it takes you to be even keel to get from one round to the next. Could we take a half hour? Sometimes fifteen minutes isn't enough. I need a half hour. We have a five minute rule in our family. Five's not enough. Fifteen minutes back to the lanes. Round robin. Let's go. <laughs> Wayne, as a track manager, what do you tell? young kids that want to come to that are racing or even older people that this is their first time doing it. Anybody who comes and they, they come to our look at advice or do a license run, I tell them, take it easy and enjoy it. The minute you don't enjoy it, it's over. So just take it easy, work your way into it. You don't have to go out and become a, a winner circle or a champion right away. Just enjoy the moment and grow in the sport. Tina, even though, again, you're new. Oh, well, new at asphalt. I know, you will do it asphalt, yeah. yeah. But I bounce off Taylor at 100%. I grew up at the track, and it kept me straight and narrow right out of school. I wanted to just go to the shop, work on the car, graduate, and go full-time race it. And my family was behind me a 1,000% always. And with my niece here, um, we've made a pretty good team with the dragster. And she came home. She's in automotive. She's a senior in high school next year. She's a top of her automotive class. So she knows the cars. And she gave us her wish list. And her wish list was she wanted to race. And she wanted a Fox Body Mustang. And we surprised her this week with a Fox Body Mustang stock. And we told her straight up, little bites. I had to learn it. I, the, this, the, like you said, the last thing we say to each other, even Pete and I all the time now, have fun, have fun. That's the last thing you say when you put your helmet on, have fun. Once it's not fun anymore, it's not worth it. But I think she's gonna be good. She's got it in her, so I'm pretty proud of her. I think she'll be fine. Very cool. Claudia, what, what would you ask this panel? As, as, somebody who, <laughs> what, as somebody who, 
you know, I mean, yes, you're in the automotive program. Yes, you now have a pilot. You're eventually going to start building on. Really what would you go up to? Even, like, no offense, Taylor, but I'm going to push you out of this. Yeah. Go up to somebody like Gary. What do you think the first question you'd want to ask him about racing was? Somebody who's been around it for quite a while. What the hell do I do? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I know. I think she bonded with When the you first quick. started, were the wheels round or are they still square? No, they were oh, all. They were all right. Right. Yeah. We just got over the hump. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a push. It was a Ronzoni car. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, what would you offer? Above and beyond. <laughs> I think she would migrate to Taylor being closer in age. She was, you know, 17 when you were 19, 20, 22. I, I think David, she, Claudia would not be so shy, but I think that would be the girl she would walk up to and be like, this is what I need to know. Or I bond with like, well, I'm a special education major in college right now, so I'm going to be a teacher next year, but I really bond with kids. Like, the all the the Wolfies know all the kids were playing football out in the little grass area and they're all like Taylor come come watch us come watch us so I was having a football pass with them I love the kids that's awesome they beat me up last night they did yeah <laughs> they were fast <laughs> no they were yeah, they're, they're mean they're playing <laughs> tackle out there we ain't got bullies <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I'm gonna. Whoever wants to answer, what is your favorite track and why? Like, where, um, oh, what track? You're going to ask this in front of Wayne? <laughs> yeah. There's, There's only know. one right answer. It's been real. Just so we start, there is a red light. I do not want to do it again. In lieu of Lebanon Valley. <laughs> yeah, Lebanon Valley aside. Aside right. from Lebanon Valley. Right, because we all fun, love Lebanon Valley. The most fun I've ever, ever had at the track was Bell Rose, Louisiana. Without question, the Sports Nationals at Bell Rose, Louisiana, Louisiana in 2008. Most fun I ever had. Hanging out with Courtney Anders, Richie Stevens, Sean Langdon. They were all super comp and up and comers. We got so trash. Everybody at Bell Rose was the most friendliest. They fed us stuff I've never even seen before. But they, I couldn't ask for a more fun time at the track. It really was. I'd say Las Vegas. There's, I've never personally raced there, but we go every year yeah, with Jackie. <laughs> and just being like watching the race go down with the mountains in the background, that's just. You don't care. I've seen this. She said, anybody answer. Ah. She didn't say go down the road. Super Street doesn't battle just on the track. Bunch of cutthroats in here. I'm going to say you have four of them. What did you say, Keith? I'm sorry. Keith, have another set. Keith, what's your favorite track besides Lebanon Valley? Okay, there was one uh, in Salem, Ohio that had grass in between. And I swear, the other car was all the way to that concrete, <laughs> and it was the neatest place I've been to because I couldn't believe it. And they said it, and what happened afterwards? But I can't say. So where was that? <laughs> uh, next to us? Oh no, it wasn't. It was um, Salem, Ohio. Try Try State Dragway. Okay, now other than that, I love Maple Grove. <laughs> other than the Maple Grove, but Maple Grove is beautiful and it uh, seems like I feel pretty. But Try State was. Besides Lebanon Valley, Wayne, oh my God. what tracks have you raced at? What do you love? Well, I did Pro Star back in the 1900s, Taylor. I was born in 1998. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> so I was born in 1990. I was 29. I was racing my first year of Super Street in 1970. <laughs> you know, I, I traveled a bunch of different tracks when we were so we doing a post star circuit back with Bobby Carlson back in the earlier years. You know, and back then you would go up, you know, 10 bikes in a 24 foot trailer and 10 up a pile in a pickup truck and go race. And I mean, um, I think, you know, out of all my adventures that I did, and it's funny, and I don't know why I remember this track, Darlington, South Carolina. Was that yes. Especially when you know the guy gets out and they ask him to weed wax the track so we can go down it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But it was probably one of the best races I ever had. It's a great time. It was great though. Darlington didn't have wind lakes for the longest time either. 
that was sketchy. You go, now you're second guessing yourself the whole time. Oh, you got to take a quick back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. track up on the grass. It was, it was unbelievable. I think with uh, the late Dave Schultz, I said, You guys got to do something about those, that grass going on the track. We can't even make it down, you know? We got there with their weed whack in the track. It was hilarious. <laughs> that was probably the, one of the best events I ever met. Right. Uh, I like Virginia. It's a nice little trip down I like that thing, it's smooth, very smooth. I like those two tracks. I see them in the and I go. That shutdown was horrible. You guys did all the bumps out of the race? Yeah. That thing was smooth, so. Yeah, that thing is nice. Having all smooth, so. Tina, how about you and your dirt track or drag racing career? Um, well, for asphalt, I had licensed at Naval Grove. I went to Frank Wally School, and I love that track as a spectator, so I was really glad to see that they were there. And that was so much fun. The shutdown there is amazing. It's just, you know, roll right out. It's just really cool. As a spectator, though, my most favorite track is the Rock. I just think the end of the year, they're just, they treat people like gold no matter who we are, we walk through the gate, racer, spectator, anybody. Um, so, um, I, I, this is my last year going as a spectator. Next week we're going as a spectator and then my goal, I don't care if I qualify. I don't care. I just want to drive my car on that track. So next year I'm going to go compete. Just say I did it. <laughs> so that's my all time favorite place. You got an Indy. Indy? Yeah. I'm new. You got that's something pretty good. Just need a oh, okay. You got yeah, something pretty true. good coming up in Norwalk too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Um, Everybody's been so nice when they found out that I was coming into this sport. I didn't know half the people I know. And I mean, I know who all you were. I know who you are. You know, I knew who people were, but, and everybody just came over and, and welcomed me and started helping me and mentoring me. And um, I got a Facebook messenger from um, a top fuel driver. And he said, when you come to Norwalk, I want you to form up my top fuel car. Ooh. See what it feels like. Wait so you hear who. I, uh, I am really, really excited about that so um that's going to be i get these folks to talk about it how do you boucher like mike butcher yes yes he's a reverend yeah yes he's a yeah yes he's, he runs out on drag here but he converted to talk to yeah. like a couple weeks yeah and he asked he just was fake. Yeah, I, i'm polish i can't pronounce anything but ski so um but yeah he was very sweet and he was talking to me for weeks at a time, trying to help me get through different, you know, processes. And then he said, when you come, please come. I want you to sit. And then he's taking me on the start line. So that's going to be cool. And then you've gotten some messages from another pretty popular guy. When I was in school, I met, I, I bonded with a man. Um, and I said to him, we were the only two doing the drag shows. And I said to him, why are you doing this? You know, and he asked me the same. And I told him, so, right? he said, I want to be a better sponsor. And I said, wow, that's that's kind of cool. Who do you sponsor? He sponsors Ron Caps. So he was from Texas, and I was drawn into his drawl and his you know accent and everything. And we stayed friends through the whole thing. And then I got a phone call from Ron Caps offering me to come over and hang with him at Norwalk. And um, I had a nice conversation with him. And so I've been very lucky, very, very lucky, and I don't take one second of it for granted. Not a minute of this stuff. I love it. Um, again, back to this is another question for everyone. Wait, obviously, you type that up. Sure will. Move back in. Where's that beat? You're all right, pretty guy. Again, I got, 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 how hard is it to change the setup if you plan to run multiple passes? Oh, <laughs> Not with the same car? That's a cute question. <laughs> He's like, I get to go first? Yeah, well, I mean, to run super gas and super treat, and a lot of the guys kind of easy. The car will leave hard enough to go straight. So I just got to change the two settings of the delay and very easy. What about for those of you who like try to run bracket and then uh, oh, uh, which is the full oh, tree? So maybe and then... I, my car runs five places. <laughs> I say you run everything. I run everything. I mean, I run. I, 
I'm going to go, I'll go wait for the expiration. I'll throw a set of tires, take the stop off, and put it in there to play on. I'm ready to go in the expiration. If I'm going, uh, I have a terminator button, so all I have to do, I can run pro. I've got a box I can run super. I mean, I can do anything with the car. I built the car that way. That's why I remember my do it. Was the Nova Pits. I wanted the Nova Pit a lot of places. Because I lost my love for super speed. And I left the sport for a good five years. And I just got hungry this year to come back because I'm not getting any younger. And I, I want to hang out. I love the people we hang out with, you know. I miss the people. I don't blame you. It's a deal. I tolerate you. Likewise, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, kind of going along the speed of these, like, you know, you've got two cars, and you ever run the same car at one event? Uh, no. no. The wife says you did, so you better run I saw that too. One event? <laughs> no, I run it here in Super Street, and then hopefully Super Street. Yeah, but never both at the same time. No, right. He's, yeah. the, only one, he's uh, the only one I was, knows that is a player of both classes. Wayne, have you ever done Super Comp and Bracket Racing? Never. No. Did you ever do Super Comp? No. All right, well, never mind. I, I had to <laughs> I had a Super Comp car, but I just... Moving on. Just bracket racing. Just bracket racing. The 373 is an equalizer. Oh, you got that right. I mean, that's a big equalizer. Tina, how was your transition from bracket racing to Super Comp? Um, Sandtrax, I ran Pro Trade, so I love Pro Trade. So I, I know Pro Trade. So you got at it. Oh, right? yeah, I was on that. But um, the bracket... It's cool. I like it. I still want to do top drags for that. I am hopefully transitioning this year, but but I love it all. I'm learning every single time I sit in that car. I'm learning something new, and I'm, I'm happy with it. Good, bad, or ugly. I know the mistakes I'm making. I'm working on them, and we'll get there. We'll get there. Wait. Obviously, 2020 was a big kick in the butt for everybody. Um, you know, you'd like to just basically forgot it, forget it existed. Yeah, I mean, obviously we all struggled through it. Uh, when you look at a managed point of myself here, uh, it was challenging, you know. Uh, New York State was very tough. I mean, I got served personally four times last year. You know, when the chairs are not going to go, I'm getting here, here for you again. You know, it's, 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 it's tough, you know. Uh, and we kind of flew under the radar as Lebanon Valley Dragway with uh, New York State, and we had some decent numbers last year. Uh, it was real tough for spectators. The rates would fall out to come, you have to prove, but you learn from what spectators It was tough for spectators. Financially, that hurt us. Big time, big time. Who didn't hurt, really? I mean, from a race point, it was a disaster. On some personal notes, my personal business, it was up 50%. You know, it depends what kind of business you're in, there are a whole whole things. If, if, you, if it hurt you, or you made a lot of money. You know, so I was fortunate in one of my assets in life to do well. Here we struggle. Up the world and every weekend, we never got shut down. Taylor, yeah, same question, but from the aspect of you traveling all over the country, how, how was it doing that last year? I guess, in a way, I was fortunate because we were all online for school, so I did get to travel around the country with Jackie. Uh, I guess just from a, I'm a very big clean freak. I have OCD. I everything has to be in order. So like in that case, I had like a whole bag of sanitizer with Jackie and just trying to keep her like actually focusing that there's a pandemic going on and we have to be careful because she isn't really the most careful person <laughs> ever in the world. So. It was more like a babysitting job, making sure we were all clean, but we managed to get through it. Thankfully, everyone came out on the other end of it. Did it drive you guys crazy? No, but yet, yeah, where you look, you know, you see more of the country than most of us. So there's all right to do Did the rule changes from state to state, even sometimes county to county or city to city, just make you guys go, why are we out here? Yeah, well, at most of the national, actually all of the national events last year, we had to wear masks, so it got really hot. In Indy, they even made the racers on the way to the lanes wear a mask, so like that got, I guess, annoying, but it is what it is. If we wanted it, my whole thing of it is, if I have to wear a mask to go racing, I'll do it, because I want to be out here, I want to 
keep the sport alive. So I guess it really wasn't that annoying because I just did it because I wanted to race. But yeah, it was crazy that you could go to like one state and it would have one rule and then the next one, a different rule. So yeah, it changed the travel. Travel. Cut down quite a bit last year. Well, still if they were open, I was there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think the first race they had was the media had a big practice race. I don't know if it was the ramp truck and the dodge. All the, I mean, uh, I'm a redneck. There's nobody around me anyway. <laughs> so, you know, to me, it was just like a normal day. I asked for nothing. Like, like he said, the track was open, we were there. I traveled. I wasn't in the Absolutely. So we were here every weekend last year, which I'm grateful for because I gotta be honest, if you come in here, I I like Jackie, I forgot there was a pandemic because everybody was so normal here, you know, and it was so well taken care of and everybody was respectful of each other. And I was just so grateful to have somewhere to come other than sit home and leave. Sure. <laughs> so much travel this year. I came here. Sports no, 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 no. We started hard and we had this year. Driving four or five races already, which is for me. So at this time of year, I wouldn't even retire, you know. <laughs> All right, next question. Wayne. Uh sportsman, sportsman racing. How hard of a sell is it to a sponsor from your aspect, from your point of view? Impossible. Why? It's tough. They, they don't see the value in it. Uh, when you sell to a sponsor, they want to know your numbers, how many people you come in. And, and drag racing really isn't a big spectator draw to be in the stands. It's a lot. You know, you go to a, like a circle track event, you know, you're there for three and a half, four hours. And it's done. Drag racing's a 10, 12 hour day. Who's going to sit out in the bleachers and sell for 12, 10, 12 hours? So sponsors kind of fade away from it. I mean, we do have, we are lucky to have what we have for sponsors. Right. Would we like more? Absolutely. But it is a hard sell. Taylor, you've been lucky with, with Josh. And, you know, how hard of a, how hard of a sell is it for you? It's, it's tough and it's not in the same respect. So like you were saying, number wise, like, when I approach a sponsor, they want to know how many likes I get on Instagram, how many posts I'm making on Instagram, Facebook. So it's hard for me because I'm a very, I'm a very loud person, like outgoing person, but I don't like talking about myself. So having to post on social media was an adjustment for me because I don't want to write like, hi, I did this, hi, I did that. <laughs> I just, that's not who I am, but that's what companies want. And if that's going to get me out here, that's what I'm going to do. So I've been really fortunate. Jackie definitely helps. Like I've made connections that I would have never made if I didn't have her as my aunt. Right. I don't have sponsors. <laughs> my own pocket. Right there. There. Yeah. Well, about fourteen-hour days, right? That's it. Work. Make money and race. Gina. I've been very fortunate. I've got a handful of sponsors um, since I bought the car, because everybody knows what a dragster is. You know, I don't care if you're into racing or not. You know what a dragster is. Everybody you talk to, what's a sand car? Try explaining that one, you know. And plus, racing locally, and this being my home track, we're from Connecticut. We're only two hours away. You know, my sponsors are being seen. People are recognizing them here, up here, coming up to us. So I've been very lucky. It's been an easy transition for me, and I'm grateful for it. So. Gary? Me, myself, and I. You're yourself. The three of us. And you do a hell of a job. We, we try. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop arguing between yourself. <laughs> okay. well, the question is who wins the argument. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's, it, nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's never the car. No. I'll leave it at that. It's very, very rarely the car. That's what all the racers say. It wasn't the car. It's, it's never my car. <laughs> it's always me. If I break something, then it's broke. It's very finite. But if I make it down to the other end of the track and then one light don't come on, that's on me. I always blame the car. The race car or the pedal car? Either. Either? Okay. Uh, um, 
Taylor, how many races did you do here? Uh, last year I did 15. 15? Frank? Uh, 10, 12. Yeah. Well, last, I don't know. Last what, year, what's your plan for? My like, plan is to rest? kill it this year. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is this is the going. This may be the Gary Federico farewell tour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill it. <coughs> I'm racing every week. Yeah. If I'm not racing with this car somewhere, I got the other car. Heck, I already won like two or three times with the other car before we even started. <laughs> <laughs> this other car that you speak of. What is it? It's, 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 it's a letter printing in. Two pictures. Just go to Cecil County's Winter Circle pictures. Scroll through. Go look at his Winter Circle pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'll raise my hand. Yeah. Where is it? Is it where is it? Yeah. The, I took five years off to do other things. Keith kept racing. Keith is a hardcore racer, and I respect him for that. You know, he's hardcore. No replacement for Steve. You were a pretty big right. deal in IHRA too, were you? I, I hate to say yeah and all that, but you know, I'm you can say it. I'm we're all on social media and all that. Ask him how many times. Champion? That's a five time no, IHRA champion, according to Gary Federico. <laughs> no, a couple world championships. Uh, also in 1090. I won. A lot of Super games. 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 How many Division I championships do you have, Greg? Not in here. Uh, in Super Street. No, just one. Just, just one. Well, I'll only come back for this only. You only got one? Year. Get out of here. It was only like the third year I started running. Who invited this guy, anyways? I feel like he's, <laughs> he's, he's always in the winner's circle. I was so in the And I run that not 90s here. You see that to me. Yeah, you have a couple over there, right? <laughs> Uh, we have a comment from Don Nelson for you. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it politically correct, he said, you got a lot of money. Buy another helmet, you cheap bastard. Oh, <laughs> no, I was going to say that. Thank you, Donnie. <laughs> I was going to say that. I didn't want to be that guy, Donnie. <laughs> and, and Johnny Majuli. Senior? Uh, Uncle Johnny. Uh, no, Junior. Said, there's a couple of great racers on the panel who are even better people. Uh, I'll let you guys figure out who's who. Miss <laughs> 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 Julie, Julie got me so out of the ticket last week, so he's my he favorite. Might be, yeah. I love him. <laughs> I love you, Johnny. <laughs> I love you, Uncle Johnny. <laughs> Wayne, do you ever get the edge to get back in the seat? No. No. You don't really? sit up, you don't sit upstairs every week, every once in a while, you just kind of no. get a fleeting thought in your head. No. Because I'd be too competitive. I have to be the fastest guy in the property. And that's not going to happen. Ooh. Mm. So, wow. So I'm going to go with faster. <laughs> Been there, done that. You know, I uh, I had a bad stretch in 2003, 2005, where I totaled two dragsters in two years. $100,000 gone. Mm. Oh, it's some you know, joke. Been there, done that. Number four, five. And my wife was pissed at me that I didn't buy a third car. Are you kidding me, really? Mm. Nuts enough. So, uh, and I was lucky. I mean, everything I had from truck, two trailers. At that point, I was I had two cars, spare motors, training. Everything was paid for. Not every racer can say that. Right. So when I was done, I didn't have that credit card bill for that second mortgage. Gotcha. I was fortunate enough to say, what I had, I have, I lost, and I was able to sell what I had. I mean, some kind of dignity out of it. But, you know, you have to be that way. You know, I've seen so many racers who go get a credit card to buy a race car. And then it's like a mortgage to buy a motor home. And, and then they just the next thing so on the final bankruptcy, they'll lose they everything they, they have. It like. happens a lot more than you think. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. And I, I mean, I don't have enough fingers <clears throat> to count the number of friends I've had who have done that and have lost their houses their marriages and everything. You know, it's you gotta be solid when you come in the sport. You know, the fastest way to make a million dollars in this sport is start with 10 million. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'll do that. I do have one other question for Tina and Taylor. How is it being women in a predominantly male sport? Like, how do the men treat you? 
feel like the men don't treat me any different than I'm just a person in a race car going down a racetrack. And I don't want to be a girl in racing. I want to be Taylor who drives Super Street, not telling you whether I'm a girl or a boy. I don't want to be labeled as a girl. So I guess I pride myself in just being one of the one of the guys. I think I can speak for all three of us that you scare the shit out of us. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor or female, it don't matter. God damn it's Taylor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I earned my legs in the sand drag. I was the first female in a blower car, and uh, I was, my husband really took the abuse for it. What are you doing putting her in a car? Why isn't she in the kitchen? All that old school, and my husband's not about that either, you know. And we raced against each other in the same class, him and I, you know. And I just sucked it up, and after a while, it was just like, I'm, I never, like you, I never did this because I was, you know, just because I wear a bra, you don't, you know what I mean? It's I want to race. I'm a racer. You know, it's in my blood. So <laughs> I probably can if I try. You know, everybody is talking himself back. Yeah. Right now, okay? Just but trying to make you laugh. For I you. can tell you though, everybody has been awesome, male or female. You know, there's no jealousy between the women in this sport in the asphalt. There's no jealousy between the men and the men and the women. I love it. Everybody here is awesome, and I'm glad I made this choice. I just wish I did it years ago. There's one thing about the sport about question that uh, it's a melting pot. There's no color. Exactly. There's no yes. black. There's no white. Correct. There's not going to help the next guy if he's broke. It's, exactly. it's all about that. That's, you know what? We can take some of this and just spread it around it the world. Sell it around the world, yes. boy. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, at that point, I'm going to stop. Sure. What is your favorite part It's hard for me because my sand car is a 3,000 horsepower blown car that I love the thrust of, but we only go 300 feet. I got in the dragster and I thought, I've never loved anything more than my sand. I love this drag. I will sleep in this dragster. I love this car. So I got to say it's stretched my dragster. So, I gotta say, I don't, you know, being involved in drag bikes in the beginning, they were the Thunderbird and the, the drag. So there's definitely a difference in the classes. You know, a, a motorcycle, you're holding on to your life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a drag strip throws you back in the seat, you're loaded around, you feel, you know you're going fast. Thunderbird, that's a wild ass ride. That car would stand in front and up three feet, four feet in the air, you'd be shifted in midair. That was a fun ride. I've only driven three things, but I'd say the truck because that's what I like the best. I in the beginning, I was my dad brought home this truck, and I was like, "Is this your car?" And he's like, "No, it's going to be your car." And I was like, "A truck?" Like, not that I wasn't grateful for the opportunity to have a race car, but I had just never even looked at one and felt like, "Oh, this is me." But now I'm like, "No one touches." Right. <laughs> I put all the drag races though. I love my Buick. I won a derail of the welding car. I've had my Nova since 1985, and I've won a lot with it on the street, and I've won a lot with it on the track. So I have to say my Nova. Even though my Buick put me in some really verified air. Also, my name is on the James Olsen truck. That's the stand up top for me. That's the highlight of everything I've ever done. Okay? No matter what happens, my name will always be on that truck. For everybody. Really? So let's embarrass everybody now. <laughs> what was your first car you ever owned and drove on the road? Oh, there we go. Uh, first car? 57 Lincoln from here. What was that year? 57. Like, <laughs> Not when you were born, your first car I was at, old man. 57, my father got me a 57 Lincoln Premier. And my sister bought me a 65, uh, 250 six cylinder Biscayne, three on the <laughs> three. on the tree. Three on the tree. Big seat. So when I was a kid, I had to buy my own car. So 200 bucks got me a four door in Dallas. That was 1970. Big bikes. 
For a cooler, right? Yeah, cool. we had a cooler. Right. And blanket. We got we we got got yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's all good that we reach that point of where we have to cut it off. Yeah, hold back that red Does mine even I have I have oh, yeah. yeah. oh, oh, that's a car. Car. 27 months to go, baby. I left my Toyota. In your illustrious three years of driving. Right. <laughs> really strong. So mine was a uh, uh, 1972 Wildcat. I had a 455 and my old man looked at it like, what are you doing? Are you so oh. stupid? It's a good thing I worked at my cousin's garage and every weekend I'd grab a tire on a strap and put it back on the car. <laughs> mine was a 69 Ford Falcon. My parents gave me. Um, they did it over and it had it on the street drive class and stuff like that. But I drove that this summer and I junk her off a lot in the winter because I like driving what I drove in the summer. So. Lauren, I had a 1988 Chrysler Cordoba. Oh, what? Cordoba. 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 I thought you were going to be in 2020 Mustang. Come on. All your money. I'm back in 1988. So, Pete, let's do, we'll ask you that question. Um, my favorite car and my first car are all the same. I've had my car since I was 13. Wow. Drove it on the street, made it a race car, and... And what's the answer to Alan Arnold's question? What was the question? What's, what's what the is it? on the car? What is the Doors, quarter panels that are modified. Tail lights. Roof, tail lights, tailgate, back bumper. Oh my. It's, it's all still, it's still got the double roof in it. Uh, really, just, uh, I mean, obviously, the chassis, the tin, the interior, of course, of course. and uh, the nose. But, I mean, it's, it's you could take a door off a of bag and put it right on that. Little, little yeah. right on. And you just had a whole bunch of work, well, paintwork done with that, too. How many of you on it? I did, I did. We, when I was, we painted the car in 17, 2017, and I was too cheap to buy a new nose for it, and I should have. The nose on the car was older than me. Uh, and it cracked and we kind of dolled it up. But I put a new nose on the car and, and my man Jaron came up and painted it along with uh, the guy Ron that works with me at the shop. And uh, yeah, it was just put new pearls on the old pig. Turn the camera on yourself, Matt. Why? Uh, uh, I was going to be like a Volkswagen bomb or something. Try and get it with the flower. 90. <laughs> 90 Chevy Cavalier. Hold on, folks. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Please hold. Please hold. Hold on. Jump, Pete. I got him. I got him. Right so, you were saying? Now, did you race that? Uh, oh, God. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, what was it? The 100? Yeah, 100. No, I drove my uh, 07 Coleman. Like that good? That good? Yeah. And that car was very infamous, and I was very much hated in that area. Yeah, you were You're the reason why they came out with the rule: you're not allowed to hit the brakes. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And what track was that? Oh, uh, what if it's speed? Waterford. I can't remember those Waterford and Super. Okay, that's enough for you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Right. I had a Chevy in Alabama. That was my first car. Um, it was a hand-me-down from my parents. Um, and I gave that to my sister. And I went to Chevy Cobalt. And now I drive an Escalade. Nice. Frank, I'll go to your first car. And just so everybody knows, it's, it's Frank A, right? Yeah. Yes. Frank A, there's no junior? No, I'm junior. You're a junior? So this is Frank A. Volpe, son of Frank Volpe, junior. Super car. Street Racer. Yeah. Super Street Racer, by the way. Oh, yeah. Mine is a All the all the it's a super yeah. I'm a former son of shit. My first car. My first car was a 2005 Honda Accord. Oh, well. Alright, so. This young lady just got her first car. Well, she has a street car. Oh, she has a street car? Yeah, she has a street car. Okay, what's your street car? What do you drive? What do you drive? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Should we call it? Cool. And she just got her first car that's going to slowly evolve into a drag race car. So, I'm a little bit about that. Actually, first off, this is, uh, this 
be very constricting in this body and this two minutes uh beats. So she's just getting out the list to make two. And so you just got your push card to convert into the drag card. Talk a little bit about that. Let's say 89 box water downstairs. Uh automatic uh as soon as I came to the track, I saw my first box card. Every time I'm helping her out with something, I see that I buy my phone. They called me this week, and they're like, my aunt, and they're like, oh, we want you to look at Fox Body. Oh, it's nothing you're going to be interested in, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, no big deal. And they're like, oh, no, we're kidding. We're going to Fox Body now. And I'm like, all right. And then I went home one day. You bastard! <laughs> no, actually, no. The old man's I actually, and my wife actually made me sleep on the couch for a couple of nights. Uh, I traded a seventy Monte Carlo for a uh, eighty-nine Fox Body Mustang. Not a big one, not, not a big one. This one, the Monte or the Monte? No, it had it had three fifty, and you know, uh, but I traded it for a Fox Body Mustang with a big ass. With, uh, you, did right here. So, <laughs> you know what? And I think I did it for garage space, to be honest with you. Okay? I gotta say, I need more garage space. And, uh, I saved myself 12 feet in the garage. Right. Uh, all right, for the middle, we're going to start with Wayne. What is what you think? Change in the sport. And you, you can pick one thing. What is it you would choose to change? Well, we got to start with me. Because <laughs> we want to hear a manager's point of view. Uh, you know, and I get the competitive edge with everybody, but a lot of people lose purpose of what drag racing is all about. Wait, is that your son? Yeah, that's my son. He crashed the <laughs> pot again like an idiot. <laughs> 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 There was actually a incident last couple weeks ago with a junior graduate program here. And I had to step in, it got a lot of control, and I called the tower, the parents, and the kids came in too. And I first thing I said, kids, not about you, it's about your parents. And we had a good meeting. And I I don't want to say I set the law, but I set some rules that had to be done. And when you come in as a in an early age and your kids are crying and they're upset about winning and losing, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. It's about learning, growing, and understanding the sport. And if you think your kid at junior graduate is going to become a national champion, hmm. you're putting them in the wrong. You want them to be a champion. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to be a champion, right? Yeah, it's that, nobody right. here doesn't want to be a no, champion. Right. But when you lose focus on why you're here, for love of the sport, that's an issue. You have to be realistic. Yes. Yeah. I guess I can tag off the juniors because obviously my sister and I grew up racing juniors. And the biggest thing I saw versus like the, the sportsman side versus the juniors is the parents put way too much pressure on their kids. Like my parents, if I lost a round or I won a round, you would never know because they never yelled at me. They would 
say like, hey, Taylor, you should have hit the brakes more, or you should have done this, or you should have done that. But like my mom always says, until you've been in the car, you can't say anything. And most parents have never been in a car. They're bringing their children out here, which is great, and getting them involved in the program, but they've never gone down the racetrack. So you don't know what it's like to have pressure and hit the tree and go down and drive the stripe at 10 years old and get screamed at. We had a friend who used to get yelled at all the time. And I said, mom and dad, if you did this to me, I would never do this because this is fun and that's not fun. Mm -hmm. right. uh, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> that, what would you change? Well, one thing you could change. I think everything's great. I think it's been very welcoming. Everybody's nice. The, the, the whole program is put together well. You just got to pay attention, you know, pay attention to the rules. There's rules for a reason, you know, follow the rules and it'll go smoother for us and for the management. So that's all I can say. People need to follow the rules. I got one easy one. Why can't everybody charge the same as Lebanon Valley? Fuel. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a good that's point. I leave like, like, here. I, like I make sure I get 15 gallons of fuel. Yeah, I go south. I go south. It's $92 to five gallons. It's yeah. $70 here. Yeah. Yeah. Maple Grove, Adco. Yeah. I mean, give us a break. This is killing us. I don't care. Yeah. I, mean, I do no. very yeah. for you. I know why. I, I know. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize this. A lot of tracks are financial strap. They either have mortgages on their race track or whatever it may be. Lebanon Valley is so lucky to have Howard Commander as the owner of this track, it's been with the family forever. And Howard, yeah, don't get me wrong, Howard loves money, okay? We all love money, okay? But Howard doesn't care about money when it comes to racing. He'd rather give everybody an honest fuel price, an honest cheeseburger, and got to go some possession, you know? But when it comes down to it, yeah, it, he will whine about money, but in the end, the money really doesn't matter. It's about having a happy facility. It's not the best facility in the planet. We get it. We get it. We never will be. I get it. But I think we're one of the most friendliest tracks around here. And, and how it supports I can go to any point and say, I need this. You might look at me and be like, are you kidding me? But then he goes, put it on the credit card. Here's the check. You've got, you know the combination to say, get it. Just do it. And Lebanon Valley is lucky to have. He proved that out over the years. I mean, when we had the flood, I mean, everything he needed to do here, he's always done. Yep. Once he was informed about what he needed, that's why this traffic is awesome. Like I said, there, there, it, I get it. There are better tracks out there. This facility, the layout is is, is kind of screwed up, and I get it. the the tracks facing the wrong direction. There's always a head. You always got the sun in your eyes at the end of the night. It's facing the wrong way, but it, you're not going to change stuff like that. You work with it, you have. Would I love to have the pits on your side of the river? Yeah. Can't move a river. <laughs> Would I like a bigger return? Yeah. Can't fight with wetlands. So you work with what you got and make it the best you can. I'll do it. I do have some money. Uh, it'll probably piss off some, some reason. But uh, when the pro owners like cried about the tree, and it went to 370 and 40. You excluded a lot of people. I mean, <laughs> I can do them both, but there's a lot of people that would love to run Super Street and just can't do it. And vice versa, a lot of the door for it. It actually made a whole class of race cars. It really did. Made made a whole class of race cars. You know, you had to deal with it. And you're asking me what I would do? I would take it back. Let them race. If I can interrupt, yeah, question for Wayne. Yeah. How hard is it to change a tree from a two a true 400 tree to a 370 tree? It's not. We are, with our system, the 400 tree system, it's a matter of a stroke of the keyboard. The okay. handicapper can type in a, she can type in a 270 tree if you want it. I can do anything you want by typing in. Because the border tree gives you that option to do whatever we want anyway. Does do you know if copulate does the same thing? You know, I, I don't have much experience by copulating. I don't believe so. It has to be in their program. Now, I don't I'm not sure that because you can go to see so you can 
come down, get a four tenth degree, three seven, all within a minute. And that's I mean, like, well, that's because of the program. It is a program. Okay. Yeah. But it's it, it's easily. But I can I can go instantly from my handicapper to a instant green by typing it without having to go to a program. She can really just when she puts your number in, she can type what kind of tree you want. And coming from the handicapper position, so like if Tori wanted the four seventy and you want three seventy, and I can run you both at the same time. Same time. So not really three. Not that's what's all about fighting. Yeah, I mean, me and Gary actually had a big fight. That's what's all about fighting. Like, I can't get a tree you want. Get out of there. <laughs> then we talk oh. about getting meatballs later on. You know, it's great. It was good. I think everybody in the uh, stage of like, was like at all. I was like, what? I could have dropped a knee on the street, but nobody was going to move. <laughs> They're like, uh oh, it's the hottest head on the planet. You know what? We kids made up. We had a good time. It was fun. I really got an edge off. I felt good. I, I think it was one of those beliefs that it was all said that I felt really good about it. And then we hugged and kissed. We did. <laughs> all right, to wrap up this evening, does anybody on our panel want to ask somebody else on our panel a question? Yeah, I want to ask you. So, how did you get it? Right. I mean, how did you get love for the sport for that many years and be hungry for that many years? I mean, I found it, I got bored. I mean, honestly, I got bored and I changed my glasses. I think because he won more than you. He won more than you. Oh, he's one of us. It's quite a bit more. But you still got to keep your energy.
We got a question from a viewer, uh, Jason Lawrence. Oh, God. How many of you use fuel injection? Yeah. <laughs> The question is to you, Keith. He wants to know if you miss it. Oh. <laughs> he misses it. It's, it's something about seniors' car go by and he disappears. That buddy sent me a rubber ducky and the bag was just like that. Right in case. I guess you can't say what happened. Very good point. Oh, 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 I, the first time I ran against him, I did my car out. And I'm waiting. Put on the first ball. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. He's perfect. He's not Chris. Perfect. He's not Chris. Perfect. He's not Chris. I'm waiting. He finally comes up. Well, I ran him again. I put my car in the water and I shut it off. I waited until he did his burnout. I waited until he did his purge. Once he started moving toward the starting line, I did my burnout. I still put on the top ball. Those are the things. That don't bother me because everybody has a procedure. But I just now want you to know if you were just yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? You yeah. know who's this and who's that. I, I can talk about that a little bit. Like, different. So in, it's, it's funny you brought up that question. Tina in her learning her yep. had a uh, double ball double race with Andy there and he came to me and I said, Dude. Chill out. She's new. She's learning it. But you, as a vector, you know, is three balls. Run your own program. That's what you got to do. Run your own program. It's what it is. You know? uh, and, you know, do I yell at every race that comes out? Absolutely. Okay, yes. Yeah. No. Do I have my court? Race lights over the last minute. Uh, you know, I love everybody here. There's so much love a lot. So, really, man. But, uh, you know, it's definitely more important. And I, I know Gary's talking about this. I'm up in town. I'm like, what is that guy doing? Come on. I'm yelling at time. Yeah. Put the ball up. Let's go. You know, in, in, sometimes you have problems up there. In, you gotta be patient with a person to get up there. And you know, it's like I said, it's a day. So, okay. Plus, I always say you have seven seconds to get in. So, whether you're annoyed at the person for seven seconds or not, everybody has a fair shot. Seven seconds for everybody. Wait, you have another year? So, seven seconds. Seven is coming. Seven seconds. Seven seconds. Thank you, seven seconds. Even if you run a big tire qualifier, you're not a top floor, it's not seven seconds unless you fell with our. Sorry, Scotty. I got one big one to step with this track. Uh, uh, it's a really, really small one. And it's, and it, and it's something that I, I was told how it could be corrected, and I had it corrected once. When you take fives, the three hang down. Over. Oh, okay. When it yeah. does, it, it hangs you out of a way, it hangs you out of one point. It seems like forever. I know it seems like forever. That's what the wife said. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so you're in a bye run. And there's a bye run. Like, I guess we're going there. Before, <laughs> the, before, the, before, the, before the tree auto start recognizes that it's a bye run, it's 1.3 seconds. And then it activates the tree. I can't how a lot of you say it's a long time. Yeah, but you know what I do? But you would think if you've been here racing before and you've been up there before, you would recognize You're not going to wait on a pro tree when both balls are on in a bye. This point one second to get on the chair. Yeah, Thinking yeah, that's going to be fun. But, but I also found out if you put top out for a funny car and take a bye, you probably can't get that. The parameters are different. Yeah. So, but when you go on auto, auto slots quick, it doesn't hang out with that. 
So what I do now is I put it out back. There you go. Yeah, we put folks here. And he still misses the three. <laughs> hey guys, we got a we got a question at home from your son. Uh, Nick, hey, Fulton, Nick, 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 we kind of touched on this earlier, but we'll go over it again quick for him because I like his parents. Uh, what is one tip for racers and management to give younger racers or prone wanting to get into the sport? I, I think prone is a type of a Yeah, something, yeah. So uh, we're looking for a tip from either racers or management that would give someone new getting into the sport a little bit of advice. Let's go with a young racer that's already in the sport. Yeah, let's get Carol on there. There you go. Taylor. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Brad, you want to know? How is it if you get somebody to talk? Like, how would you do it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Yeah. Oh, okay. How about Wayne? You see a lot of young racers coming in. What's a tip that you can give? A little bit of advice. Keep your mind. Learn the One of the good things about that junior street program, younger kids. I, I got in it, I was against junior street. When I went to the national voting level, I shot it down. I was a little afraid of a 13 year old being a full size body car. And, and not that they couldn't handle it, but the maturity level might not be there yet. You know? And then you got that parent next to you saying, It's the bread, it's the bread. Oh, oh my God. God. You know? It's like driving so, in. It, I, 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 I was driving that again. video. And yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and I was the visual one that went to high school eliminator when I adapted to junior street. That program has grown for us a little bit, and uh, you can only hope that the parents of some push the kids. Let well, me kind of add another direction to the junior street program. Do you think it would be better if you had employees that were trained to be involved in that program and not have the parent in power with them? So you have somebody who's a neutral party instead of having mom or dad in there going, dude, you gotta win. You've got to win. You've got to do this. You've got to do this now. Whereas, you know, Wayne Del Monte hops in the passenger seat and says, hey, look, this is the deal. This is what we're going to do. I, you know, you know and, and this is the, and I probably shouldn't say this, I admit it, but, uh, you know, when, when the kid goes through license process, the six pack is with the back handed. Okay. I don't get in the car with the I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not not that I don't trust a child, but now you're throwing someone new into the car. They just made five passes. Now you want to throw someone new to do something. I can see what they're doing in the car all day. I got a bird's eye view, right? You know, and uh, you know, I almost think that the kids and I would be best by themselves. Right in the car. I hate to say that. 
I know why the parents are here. They died. But you can't tell me that there's no parent in that package pushing the kid a little bit harder. And like, yeah, this is not what you need. And, you know, you want, uh, there's some great parents out there, probably in the, in the car next to them. But I can, I see the power. I see them, you know, waving their hands and, you know, and, you know, it's, it's all about being positive and enjoying it. I have another. I have another side to that junior street. So the program didn't come into play till a little bit after I was out of it. But Beaver Springs, it was an IHRA race, had this program before NHRA did. So I was able to do it. And I have two sides to it. One, there is a video of my aunt Jackie and Christina DeBarlemeo in my ear yelling, "I'm on the brakes! I'm on the brakes!" <laughs> so I get that side of it. But I will say, like. Riding down with Jackie at that age, like I learned things that I can't learn by myself. Like, yeah, my dad could tell me, listen, you're gonna hold X and this is what you need to do. And then I get down there and I'm like, well, wait, I just forgot what you just said. And if I was in front of me, behind me, now what do I do? So I feel like that taught me how to finish line drive because I had Jackie right there with me, guiding me through the whole process. So, but I do see both sides because she did yell at me. Yeah, I, 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 I think. Even if NHRA were to change at some point and we were to do it, it was bigger to maybe during qualifying have a parent leave. Come elimination, let let the driver make their own decisions at that point. You guided them to two, two qualifying runs. Now let them make their own decision. Let them grow. Let them figure it out. You know, as one, you know, they were the whole fishing story. You, know, yeah. you teach them how to fish, you can fish. You know what I mean? Right. Kind of follow the same programs. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting that I mean I, I have a 17 year old son and you know he plays sports growing up because he's a junior Olympian archer and everything and it's interesting to hear you guys talk about the parents and not all parents but a large percentage unfortunately in the racing program with their kids of how they're you know again you've got to win you've got to do this you can't you know accept defeat whatever you know it's the same crap with my kid going playing baseball and hockey and everything else and he finally came to us one day and he's like you know he had this the coach from hell and he walked we walked in the house and he, just, he threw his mitt on the ground threw his hat on the floor and just said i don't want to do this anymore and of course his parents were like why he goes because that coach fun out of it. that's what i think some of these parents need to learn and with juniors, you have so many life lessons, I feel like. Like I said, I'm going to school to be a teacher, so I'm going to teach future children. But like some of the things that I learned in junior racing, I can't get going and playing basketball or field hockey. Like I have so many life lessons that life isn't handed to you. You're not going to win every race. You don't get a trophy. There's going to be many days where you suck, and that's the end of it. And you're going to go home and try again, and you just keep trying until – you reach whatever level of success you need. Cool. Well, I think we're gonna wrap it up. I would like to ask you guys to all do me one favor before you all two favorites actually before you go. The bags, Moroso performance, thank you all very much. And thank you all. Thank you. Hold your abilities. Strong ball. Yeah. Almost like doubled up. I think we're gonna already do and again, I'm the parent of a 17 year old who is now a high school graduate. Would you guys all do me a favor and just say congratulations to Elijah? Congratulations! congratulations. congratulations. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's, as you know, a lot of you know, this has been the year from hell. And my kid is ready in April to say, screw it, I'm done. I don't even want to go back to school. And he, he pulled it off. He was not going to graduate the week before April. He was. In the toilet, but he pulled it off and he did it, and that was today. I got one question for you. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been school for Jack? How long have I been Scary. Oh, 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 that's not me. That's not me. That's, that's Tori. Tori. But Tori's been doing it for like a couple months now, and every like one just just final like. Sean is not in on these videos, even though every time he comes around the corner he's and, like so and he's good. just like, what's up? What are we doing here? But there's some extra scares in the work 
thanks to a few racers who might have said some things. I'm sorry. So be ready yeah. for scary and Jackie. Oh, and you have a seat now. Well, yeah, thank you for also for and and everybody on our panel, and including Keith, who was a, a last minute addition. And uh, I hope you guys had a good time, and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, kind of, I kind of found it at the beginning, but I'm sorry, we made up for it. Hey, uh, we don't have any kids, but if you could say I'm all right. <laughs> Thanks.